The Cooper Busman Quick Spec Power Module is an all-in-one elevator disconnect solution that allows single point communication with fire alarm control panels and meets NFPA and ASME code for elevator shunt trip control. This product provides multiple options available to help you meet specification requirements common to your jurisdiction. Cooper Busman offers two distinct power module models, the switch for single elevator protection and the panel for multiple elevator protection. This series of instruction videos covers how to build a part number for the individual power module switch. This is determined by the amperage and the various required and optional components you select for your application. Before we start, you will need to know the following information. Voltage, amperage, and the number of devices which the power module unit will communicate. All this information is found on your building specification. The first step in a nine-step process for building a power module switch part number is to determine the switch amperage needed. For this, you will need the operating voltage, horsepower rating, and application the elevator is designed to operate. For our example, we will use a motor with a 30 horsepower rating at 480 volts AC. As we look at the NEC section for 30 horsepower, we can see the proper sizing for a general duty elevator motor would be 70 amps. If the elevator is a freight elevator, it might be better to size it accordingly with 90 amp fuses. Cooper Busman offers Class J time delay fuses to fit this application. The 70 amp through 100 amp fuses all fit into the 100 amp power module switch. The correct selection in step one of building a part number for the power module switch would be PS1. The second step in the process is the selection of the proper control power transformer. As we continue with our 30 horsepower rated 480 volts AC example, the correct choice would be a T48, which stands for a 480 volt AC incoming service. In step three, by far the most common selection is the R1 code in order to power the fire safety interface relay with 120 volts AC. This is very convenient because Cooper Busman already supplies a power control transformer in every power module. The voltage will be stepped down from your incoming voltage to the needed 120 volts AC. Do not confuse the selection of step 3 with any specifications that refer to using a 24 volts DC shunt trip signal. Unless the specifications call out for the relays to be powered by 24 volts DC, most systems will use the 120 volts AC power already supplied by the power module. So far, we have selected three different sections of the power module part number. One very convenient feature is the ability for the mechanic or inspector to check operation of the shunt trip device on site at the panel location. The key to test feature in step four allows an easy and safe way to test for proper operation. If you do not select this option, the only way to test the system is to send a signal from the fire alarm control panel. Simply add the K code into the part number configuration as shown. If you do not want this or any other optional feature, simply eliminate the space in the part number sequence. Your final part number will be shorter. The pilot light on feature is available with three different colors to choose from, green, red, and white. This feature is a simple way for anyone to know that the power is energized to the unit when the light is glowing. We will simply add the G code into our example part number configuration. Step six partly depends on your local code requirements for isolated neutral lug. We offer different options to match the load configuration of each power module. If your local code jurisdiction requires this feature, simply add the code that corresponds to the power module amperage chosen in step one. We specified 100 amps in our example, so we will need to add the N1 code to our part number sequence. If you are unsure and want to add this feature, this is a very inexpensive option. Connecting the mechanical interlock feature depends upon your local code requirements, but Cooper Busman has made the process as simple as possible. In step seven, we offer two normally open and two normally closed auxiliary contacts for communication and signaling with the fire alarm control panel. One set of auxiliary contacts is located in the shunt trip switch, while another set is located on the door-mounted flange handle. 
This provides several options for signal configurations to meet code requirements in all 50 states and Canada. Select the B code for our example part number sequence. Selecting the voltage monitoring relay component in step 8 also depends upon your local code requirements. Cooper Busman offers two options. One is the single pole relay or the F1 option and the other is the three pole relay or the F3 option. This provides ability to meet code requirements for communication with the fire alarm control panel in all 50 states and Canada. And best of all, Cooper Busman offers either option at the same price. For our example, we will add the F3 code to our part number sequence. The vast majority of power module switch applications call for NEMA 1 rated enclosures. However, Cooper Busman does offer NEMA 3R, 4, and 12 if required for special applications. But the NEMA 1 enclosure is standard and therefore requires no additional markings in our part number sequence. For our example, we will select a NEMA 1 enclosure and so our part number is complete. If you have any questions, please call the application engineers of Cooper Busman. Meeting elevator disconnect requirements has never been easier. The Cooper Busman Quick Spec Power Module Switch offers the superior all-in-one solution and now available with quick ship service. Contact your authorized Cooper Busman representative for assistance.